Tax Tips – How to Be Successful This video is brought to you by Oreo Cookies. Because nothing is more delicious than two chocolate wafers with a creamy white filling in the middle. Here's the test you see. For the 9th grade 60 problems, for the 10th grade 66 problems, and for exit level 70 problems. And the real test for 9th graders has 52 problems, for 10th graders 56 problems, and the exit level 60 problems. Why the difference? Well, the difference is in field test problems. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And what's the point in all this? Well, the point is, is taking the tax is not a sprint. You are not trying to cross the finish line first. It's more like a marathon than a sprint. You need to pace yourself. It's kind of like the old fable of the tortoise and the hare. The hare is the one that's a lot faster, but the tortoise ends up being victorious by pacing itself and enduring. And in life and in tests, we go by the clock a lot. Tests are timed. Life is timed. But it's not the case on the tax. It's like timing with a sundial instead of a digital timer. You need to, as you pace yourself, if you need to take a break, Put your head down. Take a rest for 15 minutes or so. You need to be able to get through victorious. Now let's get to the test writers. The test writers are really trying to distinguish your knowledge by making, in many cases, difficult problems, multi-step problems, answer choices that will trick you into picking wrong answers. Look at this man, He's very close, within about a foot of the hoop. This is a basket he'll make, right? Well, you can't miss the layups and expect to win the game. Same thing on the tax. There are going to be a lot of easy and moderately easy problems that you cannot afford to miss and expect to win. Let's look at a couple of them. What is the approximate length of arc PQ? And here we see a, an arc that goes from point P to point Q. What is the length of that? And it gives us a radius. And so we go to our formula chart and see uh, the circumference being 2 pi r. So we put 2 times pi times 15. It equals 94 centimeters, a little over that. Look at that hook. Out by 94, that fish is biting at it. We need to multiply that 94 times the proportion, 50 degrees out of the 360 total, for 13. But look at that 94. It's too long. It can't possibly be right. You have to pick answers that make sense. Now for strategy, figure out how that test writer is trying to fool you. Consider every answer and look for multiple steps in every problem. Look for words like not, except, and invalid. Use common sense, especially in geometry problems. So many students pick answers that cannot possibly make sense. Let's look at another problem. The slide was installed at the local swimming pool as shown below, which is closest to the length of the slide. And so we draw in red here a line segment uh, demonstrating the length of the slide. Well, look at answer D. Way too long. 81 feet. Can't be right. We cross it out. Okay, now look at answer B. Now that's shorter than the longest leg. The answer has to be longer than the longest leg, so that one's impossible. Now look at 19 plus 10 equals 29, right? You see the two numbers there? They add up to 29. That's got to be right. Look at that hook out there by 29, that fish biting. Don't be a sucker. Don't take the bait. The distance by adding the two legs, the long way around. That's the long way around. We're talking about cutting the corners. So that hypotenuse is obviously shorter. There can only be one possible right answer. Think about it when you look at these problems, especially the geometry problems. And some of these problems are going to be this easy. But if, if you miss ones this easy, you will probably fail and you will deserve to fail. Now, we need to adopt the psychology of winning. What does an athletic team do to get mentally prepared for a game? They get together and they yell, we suck, we suck. 
No, no, of course not. You need to think positively. Now for a strategy. First, do the first 15 problems of the test. Take all the time you need and make sure to get every one of those problems correct. Second, do the last 15 problems. Get every one of those correct as well. So go from the first 15 to the last 15. Now why do we do this? Because in doing so, you will have completed 30 of the easiest problems of the test without seeing any of the difficult field test problems. Remember those problems we talked about earlier, those test questions? Those are stuffed away in the middle of the test. So if you get these first 15 and last 15 questions correct, it's almost impossible to fail the test. Now third, do the rest of the test. Make sure you get every problem correct you can. Examine every sentence in the reading and consider every multiple choice answer. Look for the multiple steps. Look for the answers the test writer tries to lure you with. Now let's take some time to consider the benefits of passing and otherwise doing well in the tax. If you're a ninth grader, passing the tax means that you'll have a lot more freedom in your class schedule for the next school year. Ninth graders who fail will probably have two math classes next year and probably a lot of pullout sessions as well. If you're a tenth grader, passing the tax means that you will have a lot more freedom and confidence as you prepare to finish by passing the exit level test next year. If you're an 11th grader, passing the tax means that you will not have to take a math tax ever again. You will be assured of meeting that requirement for graduation, having a much more enjoyable and productive senior year. In addition, if you do exceptionally well, you'll be able to get college placement credit for colleges and universities in Texas. Have confidence. Think of the benefits of doing well. Relax and pace yourself. When you face a tough question, do your best on that question. Don't be, don't let negative thinking take over for you. In sports, the game is won, one play at a time. If you have a tough play, you shake it off and win the next play. Work at it. Be smart. Be successful. Thanks for coming.